Hey guys, you're here with another Unfiltered Gamer interview, and we are here at OrcCon with Joey Vigor for the game Growl. He's going to talk to us a little bit about Growl and how you're going to be able to play it. All right. Well, thank you very much. So Growl is a very simple, kind of a werewolfy social deduction game for four to seven players in the basic system. And it's pretty simple. In most social deduction games, you have a roll card that basically tells you whether you're a wolf or a human or whatever the case may be. But in this game, you actually have an entire hand of cards and reconciled together, that reveals your roll. So for example, if you have three bites that are not negated by a charm, then you've turned from a human into a wolf. Um, and if you ever have three wounds that are not negated by a salve, you're dead. Whether you're a human or a wolf, you're killed and, and uh, squeezed out of the circle. So on your turn, all you have to do is reach out and take the top card, and it could be gold or it could be a bite, um, give it to another player other than yourself. So slowly, you start to influence other people's roles. And over the course of the game, more and more wolves will turn. And then whenever a night phase comes up, there's a special ability, and then whoever's turn it is will take the special ability, and then all players will pass a card left and pass a card right. And then you'll mix up the two cards you receive from your neighbors, and so if one of them is a bite, you'll know that one of your neighbors, or maybe both of them, is a wolf. Um, so it's a pretty fun little game. The end of the game it, it, uh, comes when the third night happens, and humans are trying to basically have at least one human survive. And wolves are basically trying to make sure that there's no humans left alive. Dead at the end. or now turn into Th werewolves. That's right. right. And if you die, you can still win with your team. Uh, and uh, it, but if you if you're on the losing team, uh, oh, and then at the end of the game, this is probably the most important part. I should mention this is the growl. So the growl comes when. The third night is resolved. All players who are dead admit whether they're, they're dead or alive. And then Wolf Zero, which is the start of the infection. He'll the, start going start, like this. Right? And then other wolves will join in. And if there's anybody sitting at the table awkwardly still alive and not growling, that means there's humans are left alive and all the humans, including the dead ones, win. Otherwise, the wolves win. Yeah, excellent. So we actually got a chance to play this game not too long ago, and we played it at the Arizona Game Farm, and people really enjoyed this game. It is a mix of One Night Werewolf with the were Met Mafia werewolf style, but it has that whole pushing cards face down to the players, as well as picking cards up face up from the top of the deck, which is actually a very interesting mechanic there. It's a lot of fun, though, and we really enjoyed the game, so I'm excited to see when it's coming to Kickstarter, which is, when is it again? Sometime in March. I'm not sure exactly what, what day, it depends on when the reviewers uh, get the reviews into me, but uh, sometime in March, um, and yeah, it's a fun little game. It's, it's, a, it's a card game where you don't really play cards, you just draw cards and pass cards. So uh, it's a different spin. Yep, and you can play multiple games using these coins because you're going to be getting coin, gold coins in your hand. So at the end of the game, whoever is won is going to get all these coins, and you're trying to play it to a certain amount of points, I suppose, or a certain yeah, amount of you rounds. Can, you can you play, have yeah, pretty much your, your option, right? And it's going to be interesting. Some nights, at the end of all three nights, you'll have no humans left alive, and other times it'll be all but Wolf Zero, who managed to accomplish nothing, as yeah. I just saw, which almost never happens. Usually there's at least a couple of them that yeah, have been transformed. Yeah, well, the previous game, it was, it was all wolves, and I've actually seen one game where there was no humans left alive and no wolves left alive. Only, only, everyone lost. Everyone died. It was pretty hilarious. Awesome. So. Well, I appreciate you uh, telling us about your game. Where else can we find out more about Growl before the campaign starts? Sure. You can go to the Growl Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash growl game. And you can go to my personal website blog with a bunch of videos about game making at joeyvigor.com. That's J-O-E-Y-V-I-G-O-U-R.com. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking a little Thank bit of time. You're so at really OrcCon in LA. All right, guys. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. Today, we are at uh, Strategicon or OrcCon here in Los Angeles, California. And we are with the creators of Escape from Dulce, a game that will be coming out pretty soon on Kickstarter. You guys want to go ahead and tell us a little bit more about Escape from Dulce? Sure. Escape from Dulce is a collaborative sci-fi dungeon crawler for one to five players. Uh, players uh, uh, have all been imprisoned in the bottom level of the base here, and you have to work together as a team to work your way up through all six levels of the base and escape. Yeah, so you can play as a 500-year-old samurai, you can play as Amelia Earhart, you can play as Snippy Von Bell, a psychic two-headed cow that can strap machine guns on its back. So 
It's very B movie, you know, sense of humor, pop culture references. Um, we want you to laugh while you're playing the game. Basically, so. it's a style of a dungeon crawler, right? Yeah. But it has a very unique aspect. It's got this little uh, tower here. It's a 3D tower that's gonna be coming with the game. And as you're traversing from the ground floor to the top, you're attempting to get to the very top, yep. and then fight the man in black. The we did a review black. of this game not too long ago, and it's on our uh, YouTube channel. You go and check that out. But um, if not, and you haven't seen it yet, uh, this is going to be coming out. Uh, February 28th, we're launching on Kickstarter. Uh, we're asking $80 for the game, and it includes everything you see here. We'll go ahead and edit that so everybody can get a good look, because we only see the towers. But nevertheless, <laughs> though, it's a really cool game. It's got a lot of stuff in it, and like I was saying in the review, there is uh, when you fight an ogre or fight like an alien or whatever, it's going to be A, B, C, D, and they all do different things, even though they're all the same type of alien. So it makes it very unique in that aspect. Even the bosses have their own unique aspects to them, which is really cool. You want to say something about the game? It's awesome. You really need it in your life. <laughs> uh, there you have it right there from uh, Los Angeles, California at OrcCon. I thank you guys for being part of this. If they want to know more about the game before the campaign comes out, provided I get this video out in time, where are they going to need to go? Uh, they can go to sentientcalgames.com. We're also on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Hit us up on Facebook. We're on there all the time. So if you have questions, just ask us. We'll, we'll answer them. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch the interview, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here. We are at in L.A. with OrcCon, Strategicon, and we are here with Stephanie, and she's going to show us the game Threadbare. It's an RPG book that is um, an interesting combination of the movie Nine and Toy Story. That was how it explained to me. But she'll probably be able to give you a better description than I could. So, uh, thank you so much, Michael. Um, so, Threadbearer is a powered by the apocalypse role-playing game. You roll 2d6 to resolve your actions. Um, this particular game is low combat, high fun. You are a broken toy in a broken world. Each one of your hit points represents one part of your body. So, when you break something, it's like your arm popped off. Um, so, it's a little bit like a little bit of body horror, but it's also very fun. Um, over-the-top kind of comic booky sort of action and basically you go through the world uh, breaking stuff repairing stuff upgrading stuff and making friends sometimes literally how many players can you have for the game and is it a DM based style game it right? is a DM based style game um, the sweet spot is about four to five I think I've run it with up to seven but then it starts getting kind of bogged down now, I know a lot of RPGs I don't do a lot of them myself but I know they usually come with miniatures you'll use a certain thing this here you use your own little toy right you can but mostly you just use dice in your imagination awesome yeah. that works the, has, has the anybody, toy is optional has anybody ever thought of some in interesting ideas along with it oh my gosh so many ideas that uh, you know most people come to the game with some idea of a toy that they like that they want to play so so they'll they'll come to the game and, and they'll they'll bring something from their childhood. Um, they'll bring you know this is my favorite doll or this was the thing that we had in my classroom or something like that that's very personally connected. And then we just have a blast trying to you know see how they can you know go over the top. With Not it. explode it. How to explode? It. Yeah. In fact, this is Dora the Exploder, um, that particular doll. And um, one of my favorite things came out of a playtest session. Can I ramble a little Go bit? Go ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, this is one of my favorite stories. We were playing with my sister and my niece and a couple of my niece's friends. And we got to this point where um, they, were, they were in a vehicle and they were hurtling towards a cliff and they were going to, you know, fall into a cavern or a um, canyon. And my sister, she's a couple years older than me, but she's very creative as well. And she said... Okay, so so my, my niece, who is very science-minded, she says, okay, we're going to need to build a ramp, guys, to get over this, because otherwise we'll never make it. And my sister says, no, 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 it's fine. If we hold our breath, we'll float. And I, I looked at her, I was like, what? Yeah, okay, you know what? The dice tell us if that's true or not. And so on the spot, we said, okay, roll the dice, we'll see if you're right. She rolled the dice, she rolled the 12, I was like, okay. It is factual in this world now. When you hold your breath, you float. So, um, and you know, we don't know why. It just we're like we can explain it if we want to, but we don't have to explain it. We're toys. That moment made it into the book as a basic rule, where you can literally change physics in this game. 
and say, oh no, this is how this is how the world really works. So there you go. That's great, awesome. So where can we go ahead and pick up the game if we want to get it? So you can get it, of course, uh, at conventions like like Orcon here. Um, you can also buy it on Drive Through RPG. It will be uh, on sale for print on demand starting in about a week. Uh, otherwise, right now it's available as PDF on Drive Through. Awesome, great. Well, I appreciate it and taking the time to uh, show us the game and um, any other things they need to know about, Facebooks they need to go to? Uh, or? We have a Facebook page, we have a Facebook group, we have a Google Plus group, um, and we have a website called threadbearrpg.com, which has links to all of those things. Awesome, And Stephanie, links yeah. to the uh, character sheets and playbooks and stuff, so people can download that if they bought the book. Super cool. I appreciate you having the interview. And, okay. uh, yeah, anything else you want to say? Last, last comments? Thank you so much, Michael. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Not a problem. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you next time.